wonderful people it is your girl Simone Nicole back at it again with another video and in today's video I'm bringing you guys a tutorial on how I achieve not only these butterfly locks but also just like regular faux locks I was watching I think haunting of hill house while I was doing my hair and I think that I forgot that I was doing butterfly locks and not faux locks so I accidentally ended up doing faux locks and I was just like you know what it just is what it is and I wore those to Vegas and then before I went to Atlanta I decided to add some color to them and to make them way more butterfly like I guess you guys get a two-in-one tutorial how and ever before we start this bad boy off we have got to do our subscriber shout out of the day. Today's subscriber shout out is going to go to Miss Deja King. She commented on my extra long knotless braid tutorial and she said, I felt that crying when your hair doesn't come out right part and you can't be mad because you did it, LOL. Girl, thank you so much Miss Deja for commenting on my video and giving me a little laugh because she was spot on with that one. And if you would like to be my subscriber shout out in my next video, then first you have to be subscribed and two, drop a little comment say a little something nice leave a little something funny funny down in the comments and you could be my next subscriber shout out and with all that being said let's get into today's two-in-one tutorial hello everyone i am unsure as to why i look so miserable in this clip but i promise i'm not so we are actually going to be starting out this tutorial on an old twist out a very old child because this was a last minute style because i was going out of town and i figured that it would be quick and easy for me to do so this is just to show you guys that um this look is super duper achievable um but you do have to start it with a base of some kind whether that be braids or twists and i honestly recommend braids because the twist had my um locks sliding a bit so this is what my hair is looking like. I only had about six left by the time I started recording. So I'm gonna take my tried and true magic fingers for braiders. I will have that linked down in the description box and I will also have this hair linked down in the description box. A lot of people use the free tress hair but they didn't have it at the beauty supply store that I went to. So I just bought that. And what I will say is that that hair is a lot better for locking up on itself. It's not as soft as the other hair. So I'm going to take the hair and I'm going to pull it apart. The hair to the right is pre-pulled. The hair to the left is after I pull it apart. And I went around the base of my twist with the magic fingers to smooth down the base of the, the twist, like I said before. Then I'm going to take my crochet needle and I'm going to put it through the center of the base. How many times am I going to say base of the twist? And I'm going to hook the hair in. You can close the hook or you can keep it open. It'll close once you pull it through. And then once I get it pulled through enough, I'm going to take one side and I'm going to start to pull through until I get the what's my and your right side all the way through and then I'm gonna pull that right side until the hair that's left in the left is gonna be just about as long as my hair and that's on purpose the hair on the left is gonna determine how long your lock is so we're gonna start out by twisting and you're gonna make sure to keep your hair, the hand that is moving, which is my right hand, as perpendicular as possible. If you slide them down too low, then it won't look right and it'll start to look sloppy. I'm gonna show you guys how I get my loops, okay? So I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm going to use it to separate a piece off of the hair that I'm working with. And then I'm gonna take the moving hair in my right hand up and over the loop. And then before I take my thumb out, I'm gonna show you again, <laughs> up and over the loop. Then before I take my thumb out, I am going to wrap that piece underneath the loop as well to lock it in place and if you don't go on top and below it the loop will not stay it'll go away now if i wasn't too busy watching tv or netflix then i would have noticed that i wasn't doing enough of those loops to give me the butterfly effect but you need to basically be doing them every single time um, you take that hand that's moving the right hand and every time you're wrapping it around i, I hope i'm making sense in order to give you that butterfly look. 
but the technique is all the same and basically what you want to focus on is making sure that your right hand is moving and that you always have a stable hand that is going to stay clenching the hair and your hair together now as we get to the end i'm going to take my other hair and use it as a reference for length and i did that all throughout my hair so i can make sure that all of my hair was the same length and even if your hair isn't as long as mine because i wanted them basically as long as my hair um the hair that you used to the left is going to determine the length so now that we're down to the two pieces i kind of used like the beehive method as i like to call it and i folded one portion of the hair halfway up and then use the other portion to wrap around and around and around like a beehive then when i felt that it was secure i added the one piece that i was using to wrap and the piece that was folded up together and then i proceeded to wrap in the opposite direction and that is very important you want to wrap in the opposite direction as to the way that you are twisting on the way down so if you are wrapping in towards yourself on the way down when you flip your hair do the little beehive method make that little little circle on the bottom you are going to make sure that you are then wrapping away from your face and you're going to keep on going and keep on wrapping up the lock until you are completely out of hair and it has twisted on to itself and that is how the lock looks it is so easy you guys so that one is going to be shown in real time Moving forward, I'm going to show you guys zoomed in and slowed down a bit so that you can catch the technique again. Okay, so again, we are going to take the crochet needle, put the hair into the loop, and then pull it through. Then we are going to pull the hair so that your stationary hand has the length that you want the lock to be at. Then your moving hand, which is my right hand, is going to move to wrap the hair around keeping the hair perpendicular to you you're gonna see me not go perpendicular right here and the braid started or the lock started to look sloppy so i had to go back through undo it and go a little slower so that i wasn't moving too fast so this is me showing you guys again how i take my thumb and i separate out a piece of hair creating a loop I'm going to wrap over that loop and then I'm going to wrap underneath that loop in order to secure it. And again, if you want the butterfly method and you do not want faux locks, then you are going to do what I just did every single time you wrap the hair around the hair shaft or around the stationary hand. And when you don't hold the hair exactly perpendicular, when you're wrapping down and you're going too fast, you will start to see gaps. And you can see gaps in my hair from my um, color that I have in my hair peeking through. But I was okay with that because I felt like it gave me more of a distressed look. But um, technically that's a mistake. This is also the ha something that happens a lot where you're running out of hair, like the hand that's wrapping is running out of hair. So I'll just borrow from the other piece of hair because there's plenty of hair there. And it happened again. So I had to, again, borrow from the left hand or from the stationary hand of hair. And then I didn't show you guys me flipping the bottom because I didn't realize I wasn't in frame properly. But I'm going to go through that exact same process. Even with the two little skinny pieces left, I'm going to flip the longer stationary piece up and then take the hair that i was wrapping and start to wrap it around like a beehive until i am comfortable and it feels like it is locked in place and then i'm going to flip up and continue to wrap around the lock in the opposite direction as to where i was going down the lock
Alrighty, so moving forward, I'm just going to let you guys watch to see the process of what I do. And then I'll jump in whenever I need to add a little, little nugget of knowledge or a warning to you guys. Okay, so what you see me doing here is taking a piece of like stray hair that I, I don't know, didn't need. And I'm using that to add to um, the hair. So you know my method of borrowing from the stationary hand hair? Well, sometimes you can do another method, which is what I just did, and just take a new piece of hair and start to wrap it around and incorporate it into the old hair. Um, and that'll be like better for thickness but it will also cause what you see here which is a little bit of inconsistency in tightness so in order to fix that i am going to show you another method i'm going to take that hair and cut it in half then i'm going to take that halved piece i'm going to fold that in half and then i'm going to go from the bottom of my hair and I'm going to proceed to wrap that around the hair because once I added that hair, it got a little dicey as you can see. And I kept the end of that hair looped around my finger as an anchor until I was done wrapping it around and I had caught it around the faux lock well enough and then i let it go and it turned into a little loop which adds the whole butterfly effect and then i made sure to wrap that hair around tightly in order to conceal where the hair got a little wonky from me adding in that extra hair the method of adding in extra hair definitely works um i just apparently didn't do a good job on that piece but i definitely did it throughout my entire head and i like the way that it looks it looks inconsistent it looks messy and that's really really the look i was going for so this style is super cute and it looks a little stiff right now but it definitely didn't stay that way and you will be able to see that in the coming video clips what if i wear it like this i think ugly don't don't lie to me 
I was gonna say calm, but that doesn't make sense. Like, I look like I look like Anthony Anderson from the last scary movie. Do you remember Anthony Anderson from the last scary movie? Yes. He was like, was he the one that's kind of gay? Oh, he was very much so. And now we have moved on. I have went to Vegas. I have turned up, and this is my hair about uh, a week and a half after you saw in that clip a week week and a half maybe two weeks so they have definitely softened up and they look super natural but we are going for the butterfly look okay i have done the bottom half of my hair and as you can see my hair looks a lot more like butterfly locks and this was so easy to achieve once i already had that base down so i did end up getting the free trust hair and again i will have the color and um, all of that info down in the description box i went through and used the magic fingers for braiders again and touched up the roots of my hair to make the parts look cleaner now i'm going to take this hair and it's like a water wave texture and it has kind of like a cast on it so by running your whole hand down the hair it breaks that cast and i didn't have to work as hard as i did with the other hair it didn't tangle as much but i also didn't need it to fluff out as much because it was an accessory to what i already had and not like you know like the main course so I'm going to repeat the same process of taking my crochet needle, pulling the hair through, and I'm still going to pull one piece really, really long and then keep the other piece relatively short. Now this is where I messed up, okay? I had a lot of gappages between my scalp and where the lock started because I used twist. And because I used twist, the locks were sliding down because the like a braid would be more secure to the root of my hair. So I wrapped the hair around far too many times at the root. So I had a tremendous headache for a couple of days and it was just not a vibe. So moving on to the actual technique of what I'm doing. I still have a stationary hand and I still have a moving hand. My left hand is still my stationary hand and my right hand is still the moving hand. What has changed is that I am using my thumb for loops every single step of the way. And that is what's gonna give you more of that butterfly look. In addition to that, I already have the faux lock underneath as a base. So me just wrapping hair around the faux lock is going to give it that butterfly look. That's why I'm kind of happy that this happened because I was able to discover like, if you do wanna try out faux locks for a bit and then you wanna refresh them and turn them into butterfly locks, it's so easy to do the butterfly lock part and I didn't have to use a lot of hair at all so this is a prime example of me wrapping the hair around the base of the butterfly lock slash faux lock so tightly like I'm trying to pull hair out of my head it's, it's honestly a mess but yes this clip is sped up but not by much because once you start you're really going to get the hang of this guys I promise promise just remember you have a hand that moves and you have a stationary hand the stationary hand is going to do the work with pulling out that hair to get you a loop and then your moving hand is just going to go above and below that thumb and you're going to wrap all the way down and if this happens where you run out of hair wrapping wise you're going to do the same thing you are going to take a piece of hair cut it in half and this time i kind of like feathered the hair so that it didn't have like that blunt into it and i basically took one in and anchored it in order to start wrapping around the rest of the hair and I didn't mind that some hair was sticking out, that it wasn't like completely tucked in because it just added to the distressed look of the faux lock slash butterfly lock. So not having everything perfect and pristine is actually what's going to make these butterfly locks look a lot better. And if you make any mistakes, it doesn't really look like a mistake. It looks like it's meant to be. So like for example, because I went about this whole technique completely differently and this hair also, the free trust hair is a lot softer. So it didn't lock around itself like my original hair did. Because this hair is so soft and I didn't secure it as best as I could because I knew that this style was something that I didn't want for a long time. 
the hair has started to unravel. So when I um, look in the mirror right now, as I'm recording this voiceover, there is literally hair that has unraveled away from the faux lock. And I don't even care because it gives it like that boho kind of like, oh my God, it's a little, a little of this, a little of that, a little curly hair there, a little, you know, it, it adds to the overall look of it. So I don't mind it at all. And that is it, you guys. The faux locks came out beautifully, and so did the butterfly locks. They look a little heavy, but I promise they're not. They're just tight because I was tripping. <laughs> and that is all for this tutorial. That brings us to the end of our tutorial today thank you guys so much for coming and potentially learning how to do a new style on yourself this is hands down the easiest style that i have ever done on myself i hit up a girl that's from my city to do my hair and did you know that she told me that she charges like 260 or like 290 dollars for these mm, i said no mm -mm, no nope we're not doing that so um yeah we're gonna diy this even if you are a person that struggles with doing your own hair at home i promise you that this style is so approachable you just have to get the technique down which is not that hard and then you are all set to go thank you so much for coming back to my channel and i hope that i was able to teach you a little thing or two and if you end up doing this style please make sure that you tag me on instagram or on twitter both are simone nicole and i will have more information about my exact ads and direct links to my pages down in the description bar down below or you can just follow me just in general just to follow me you know whatever whatever thank you so much for watching today's video remember to keep positivity in your life because positivity breeds positivity and we have absolutely no time for negativity in 2020 i will see you guys in my next video super soon bye guys